is correct and you can hear me and see me. There are four attendees now. Alan and Dean, uh, please guys write where are you from. Uh, by the way, I'm from Russia. Okay, we will wait in, uh, we will we will be waiting for more people and then we will start our webinar. I believe it will take just up to 10 minutes until people join. Okay, just guys, please write if you can hear me because I don't see anything in the chat window or you can use question mode to send me that everything is okay. Okay, there are only two tenders and just could you guys please write if um, you can hear me. Oh, now, now I see that there are two more people. Just tell me if the sound is correct and you can see me. Okay, while you are joining, I will uh, I will tell you something from uh, our economic calendar for this week. Actually, the most interesting thing will happen to me tomorrow. It will be interest rate decision from uh, Russian Central Bank. It's, it's very important for me because I am from Russia and uh, Actually, I think that uh, interest rate will be left unchanged at 9%, but there is a, a small probability that uh, the interest rate will decrease. Uh, what what will it change for the market? Um, usually, uh, Russian Central Bank decreases the interest rate to support Russian ruble, but I believe it won't help because yesterday I've heard that uh, United States uh, t took the new sanctions against Russia and um, so it will affect our economy and that's why ruble is going to decrease against American dollar. Okay, what else? Uh, today it was also uh, released such an indicator as core durable goods orders. If you remember I uh, my first webinar was about news trading and uh, one of the pattern I created on this uh, event so actual, actual value is uh, 0 0.2 percent but the focus was 0 0.4 so it's less than the forecast and Generally, it's not so good for American dollar, but uh, 
I think everything will be all right uh, because tomorrow we are also waiting for GDP uh, to be announced. I mean, American GDP. Uh, also, Canadian GDP will be published. And uh, traders are waiting for um, the second quarter for GDP to be plus 2 and 6 percent. It is more than it was in the first quarter. In the first quarter, it was 1 and the 4. And uh, it will be definitely positive for American dollar and uh, probably uh, Euro will uh, decrease against the dollar. Not, not so much because um, I, you will see in this webinar that now it's an uptrend on Euro against American dollar. Okay, what else? Uh, yesterday it was uh, it was Fed interest rate decision published and uh, they left uh, their interest rate unchanged at 1.25%. Uh, so that was expected and it didn't affect the market. Okay, thank you Damien. I see that uh, you hear me? Okay, perfect. So we will wait for more attendees and then we will continue. And yes, <laughs> this webinar is going to be recorded and uh, it will be uploaded on uh, Forex So, so you will watch it. You, you can watch it in future. Okay, so if there are any other questions, you may ask them before the webinar. Maybe uh, there are some questions from, from my previous webinar. You can um, just send them to support at forexboard.com and uh, Damien will resend it to me and I will, of course, I will answer. I will give you a detailed answer. So don't worry. And uh, for example, if you will have any questions today, and uh, for example, if I uh, won't give you the uh, the answer, just send all the questions uh, that you will have after the webinar to support at forexboard.com. Yeah, so the webinar is recording because now I see the button stop recording and I don't want to push it. Okay, there are seven attendees. So we will wait for a while, I, I believe for, for five minutes or less maybe. Okay, what else is going to be uh, what else was published this week? Uh, uh, actually, yesterday a new home sales for June were published in America, and uh, but uh, I don't believe that they really affect the market because uh, the actual value was uh, just slightly below the forecast, but more than uh, previous. So it is not so important. Uh, uh, consumer confidence uh, was published on Tuesday and um, it was 121.1 which was higher than the forecast and uh, the, pre uh, the previous value. So it also means uh, that American economy is in a good state now but we see that an uptrend in euro against American dollar continues. Uh, 
by the way, uh, if you have any ideas regarding uh, crude oil price, because um, why I ask you, because on Wednesday, crude oil inventories were also published and uh, it is very interesting because the withdrawal was so high. It was uh, more than uh, minus 7 million. However, the forecast was only minus 2 and 6 millions. Uh, but today I've noticed that um, the price of uh, the oil slightly increased and uh, I usually look at the price of crude oil because um, our Russian currency, Russian ruble, depends on the crude oil because uh, Russia is one of the uh, biggest exporters of crude oil. Okay, so there are seven tenders. I, I think we should wait for a couple, and uh, maybe then we will start the webinar. By the way, uh, today's topic of the webinar is how to use divergence with popular forex indicators. Uh, if you are an experienced trader and you also use divergence in your trading system, just don't hesitate to write it in the chat window or in the questions. Uh, by the way, uh, does anyone use uh, uh, does anyone use uh, the expert advisor that I gave on uh, my previous webinar? If you have any comments on it, uh, just you, you can write it uh, right now before we start, or you can uh, just send them at uh, support at forexboard.com, and I will definitely comment. If you have some results, maybe I mean some positive result or negative result, we can also discuss them. Uh -huh. And Damien uploaded it in Forexboard private trading group. Okay, that's great. I started to trade algorithms with this uh, expert advisor. It was the first advisor that I uh, that really brought me money. And uh, then I just used uh, the logic behind this advisor and just add more filters and it made and it made my systems more profitable. Okay, there are only seven people on the webinar, and anyway, I think that it's time to start because 14 minutes passed, and so just uh, for those, okay, let's go. Um, for those who missed this webinar, this uh, webinar is now recording, and it will be uploaded at forexboard.com. Okay, just again, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, this is my third webinar on ForexBot, and, uh, but anyway, uh, let me introduce myself for those who missed the previous two. My name is Viktor Neustroyev. Um, as you know, I'm a private trader, and uh, since 2003, I've been trading the financial market, and I started with Forex, and then broaden my horizons to commodity markets. Uh, so now I specialize on agricultural markets. I consider them to be more transparent and yes, uh, sometimes they bring me money, but I also trade Forex. 
So I keep trading Forex and uh, I have a few strategies that work and uh, today we will discuss such a phenomenon as divergence. Okay, just don't forget to read uh, the disclaimer. I will turn off my camera and we will start. Uh, often when you use technical options in forex trading, you can face with a divergence between indicator signals and the tendencies that you see in the price chart. Using these contradictory signals can help to find the best moment to enter the market and trade as professionals. Okay, I hope you read the disclaimer. And this is the topic, how to use divergence with popular forex indicators. And this is our webinar plan. Okay, so what is a divergence? Let's start with the most obvious question and explore what a divergence really is and what it tells you about the price. A divergence forms on your chart when price makes a higher high, but the indicator you are using makes a lower high. When indicator and price section are out of sync, it means that something is happening on your charts and it requires your attention. Okay, uh, basically a divergence e exists when your indicator does not agree with price action. And uh, please look at this chart. In this example, I use relative strength index to recognize the divergence. You see, for example, this is price minimum and this is the second price minimum, but when we look at the RSI indicator, we see that this minimum is lower than this one. And this is the case when your indicator does not agree with the price. And usually it means that uh, the trend will be reversed. And uh, also one more example at this picture. Uh, you see that there is a high and another high which is higher than the previous but if we look at our indicator we see that the second high is lower than the previous and it means that downtrend will exist so uh, it means that the uptrend changed to downtrend probably In this example, I use relative strength index, but what traders usually use? When you are looking for divergence, you may use any oscillator, and here is the list of all indicators that can be used. There are 30 indicators in this list, and um, even you can use tick volume it is also mentioned here or you can create your own oscillator based on the price action uh, for example you can uh, sum open close high and low prices and divide it by four but the most popular indicators are uh, for, for looking for divergence are relative strength index uh, RSI uh, stochastic oscillator uh, moving average, convergence, divergence, it is also called MACD, and commodity channel index, hmm, uh, CCI. 
As for me, I mainly use RSI and uh, stochastic. But in this webinar, I will describe all these four popular indicators. Uh, maybe you will know how to use them, but I want to describe for those who don't know or doesn't understand how they work. Okay, let's start with relative strength index. It is a momentum oscillator and it measures the speed of change of price movements. This uh, indicator oscillates between 0 and 100. Traditionally, RSI is considered overbought when, when it's above 70 and oversold when it's uh, below 30 in this rectangle, for example. If you use this indicator, signals can also be generated by looking for divergence, divergences. And sometimes, of course, traders use uh, RSI to identify the general trend. Okay, and this is uh, the main formula. And U is average number of positive price changes and D is average number of negative price changes. For example, if the period of this indicator is 14, as I usually use, we should calculate average gain and average loss of last 14 candles. And this is how we calculate this relative strength index at the moment. Okay, the next indicator we are going to observe is stochastic oscillator. And it compares where the price close relative to its price range over a given time period. Stochastic is displayed as two lines. Well, you can see it here. The main line, which is a blue line, it is called K. And the second line, uh, the red one, is a moving average of K. It is called D line. And there are several ways to interpret a stochastic oscillator. What are they? Uh, the first way is to buy when the oscillator, uh, either K or D, falls below a specific level. For example, here it falls below 20. And then, uh, then it rises above that level. Here you should buy. And uh, sell when the oscillator rises above uh, 80 and then falls below this level. So you should sell here. Another way to use this indicator is uh, to buy when uh, the K line crosses above the D line. For example, to buy, uh, uh, just to, to buy here, for example, or here, one more, and uh, sell, for example, here when it uh, crosses below. And the third way of using this indicator in trading is to look for divergences. And uh, this is the formula of this indicator. So close is today's closing price and uh, minimum low is uh, the lowest minimum. Max high is the highest maximum. And as for the D line, it's just a uh, moving average. It is calculated as uh, a simple moving average of K. And N is smooth and paired. The next indicator 
I wanted to know is MACD. It's a trend following dynamic indicator. It indicates the correlation between two moving averages of a price. This indicator is calculated as a difference between a 26 period and 12 period exponential moving averages. Now, it is shown here. And there is a signal line. Uh, in this picture, it's a red line. It's just a moving average of uh, MACD values. Okay, and again, there are three popular ways to use uh, the MACD. Uh, so they are crossovers, overbought, oversold conditions, and uh, looking for divergences. Uh, usually, One of the trading rule is to sell when uh, MACD falls below its signal line, like uh, like you can see it here. And then it was a downtrend. And um, yes, I can say that uh, this method works. And uh, similar to uh, short trades. There is a buy signal when the moving average uh, convergence divergence uh, rises above its signal line, like it was here. For example, if you buy here, then you can really you could really earn much. And it's also popular to buy or sell when the MACD goes above or below zero. What else? Um, MACD is also useful as an overbought or oversold indicator. Uh, for example, when a shorter moving average pulls away dramatically, like you can see it here, for example. Um, it pulls away dramatically from the longer moving average. It is likely that uh, the prices are extending and it will soon return to more realistic levels. Okay, and uh, the last method to trade with MACD is using divergences. The next indicator we are going to observe is Commodity Channel Index, uh, CCI. It measures the deviation of the commodity price from its average statistical price. High values of the index point out that the price is unusually high being compared with the average one. And low values show that the price is too low. And, uh, of course, it's part of its name. The Commodity Channel Index can be applied for any financial instrument, including currencies. Uh, there are two basic techniques of using CCI. The first one is finding the divergences, and another to use it as an indicator of overbuying, overselling. Uh, this um, index usually varies in the range of minus 100 uh, to plus uh, minus minus 100 uh, to plus 100 and uh, values above plus 100 for example here inform about overbuying state for example you can sell here if you use this indicator as as a, as an overbought indicator and um, for example, here, uh, the indicator is uh, below minus 100. It informs us about the reselling state. So it means that we should buy here. 
Uh, as for the calculation of this indicator, it's very complicated and I don't want to spend much time explaining it on this webinar. Uh, so our topic today is divergence and uh, let's stick to the topic. So, oh, as I have, uh, as I, I already said that divergences work on all indicators, uh, but my favorite is relative strength index. And uh, you should remember that this indicator compares the average gain and the average loss over a certain period. Uh, so, for example, if uh, the period is 14, it compares the bullish candles and the bearish candles over the past 14 candles. Uh, when uh, when the RSI value is low, for example here, it means that there were more and stronger bearish candles, no, you may see it from the chart, than bullish candles over the past 14 candles. And when RSI is high, for example here, it means that there were more and larger bullish candles over the past 14 candles. Oh, you can see it. There is six bullish candles in a row. Uh, typically, the RSI makes higher highs during healthy and strong bullish trends. This means that there were more and larger bullish candles in the most recent trend wave. When the RSI makes similar highs during an uptrend, it means that the momentum of the trend is unchanged. When the RSI makes equal peaks, it does not qualify as a divergence because it just means that the strength of an uptrend is still up and stable. When you see that the price is making a high high uh, during the bullish trend but your RSI makes a lower high, it means that for example, you can see here, it's a higher high and it's a lower high. And it means that uh, the most recent bullish candles were not as strong as previous price section. And the trend is losing momentum. This is what we call a divergence. And here in the screen in this screenshot you can see that uh, this divergence uh, signaled the end of the uptrend and it uh, makes a downtrend possible. So from this candle downtrend starts or from this one. But please look at this chart again. Uh, there is something wrong. Try to notice what exactly is wrong. Just think of for, for a few seconds. Okay, what is wrong? Uh, in the first case here, it's not a divergence. Only the second one is divergence. And the first one is called convergence. Uh, let me explain you what it is. Convergence in Forex uh, describes a condition under which the price and the value of an indicator move in the same direction. Here you can see the situation in which market prices show an uptrend. Yes, it's an uptrend. 
And so that's our technical indicator. It's an uptrend. This uh, maximum is higher than this one. In this case, we face with resuming momentum and there is a high probability that the trend will persist. Uh, what exactly happened on the chart? This peak is higher than the previous one, so the trend uh, continued. So here, here, the price and this indicator converged. Sometimes we can use convergence to confirm the trade continuation, but mm, I prefer to use divergences more when we are looking for reversal of the trend. Okay, so the next uh, indicator, uh, it's stochastic the, and it's stochastic divergence. Uh, yes, we can use stochastic in the same way as we used RSI to identify the divergence. And please look at the chart. Again, we see that the price and the indicator diverge with each other. The price forms another peak, which is higher than the previous, uh, while another peak uh, that was formed by the indicator is lower than the previous one. And again, uh, the same situation. This peak is lower than this one. And uh, when we look at the indicator chart, we see that this peak is lower than this one. So again, uh, the price and uh, the indicator diverge. Uh, now let's look at another example using a MACD indicator. And again, we can see here the situation when data focused by indicators differs from the current price movement. MACD is considered to be the most effective indicator to find out divergences. For example, uh, this low is lower than this one, but if we look at the indicator chart, this lower is higher than the previous one, uh, than the previous one, and it means that uh, it's a signal for the market to grow. What exactly happened later? Another example, it's a bearish divergence of MACD. Now we see uh, an uptrend and there, are, there is a first high and the second high. But if we look at uh, the indicators chart, the second maximum is lower than the previous one. And the indicator signals for decline, and yes, market decline then. And just one more example. Uh, it's a commodity channel index, and the idea is absolutely the same. Uh, we found two maximums of the price and two peaks of the indicator and you see that they diverge. That's why the market is likely to move down and uh, it happened, but it happened here, but uh, then the market increased.
Okay, uh, this were, uh, this all were classic, or we can call them regular divergences. In contrast to classic divergence, also uh, hidden divergence exists. It happens when the oscillator reaches a higher high or lower low, while price action does not do the same. And in those circumstances, the market is too weak for the ultimate reversal. And thereafter, the prevailing market trend resumes. Uh, and again, uh, hidden divergence in Forex may be either bearish or bullish. Uh, here is an example. It's a hidden bearish divergence. You see that uh, the market formed two maximums and the second is lower than the first. These uh, maximums match to minimums on indicators chart and the second minimum is higher than the previous one uh, and of course usually there is a small lag, two or three candles. This case is called hidden bearish divergence and it signals that the downtrend will continue And yes, it happened, so it was uh, the continuation of downtrend, but, the, but then the market consolidated. Let's now look at um, hidden bullish divergence. We see two price lows which match with uh, indicators highs. And the second low is higher than the first. On the indicator chart, the second high is lower than the previous. And this situation is called hidden bullish divergence and trend is likely to resume. And yes, exactly, not trend continued. Uh, hidden divergence is considered to be a very weak signal and not so many traders use it. Uh, but you should definitely know about such type of uh, divergence. As for me, I don't trade hidden divergence, only regular. Uh, and now let me explain you how to trade a classic divergence and when to open the trade. Uh, it's a common knowledge that a divergence doesn't always lead to a strong reversal and uh, often price just enters a sideways consolidation after a divergence. Keep in mind that a divergence just signals a loss or in momentum but does not necessarily signal a complete trend shift. To to avoid trade and tries that don't go anywhere, I highly suggest trading only the direction of the main trend. I will show how. Now, now I will switch to my method trader. Here it is. I use daily or daily or this is daily or H4 time frame to define the main trend. Here for for example uh, for example we are here we are here and it's an uptrend there are three minimums in a row and they formed an uptrend and it, it continued. And then we see the correction and again the continuation of the trend and another correction, again the continuation and the correction and uh, now I switch to lower time frames, for example, to M30 
and I noticed the divergence. Here it is. There are two lows and there are uh, also two lows uh, of the indicator and this one is higher than the previous. What signals that there will be a reversal of the trend, probably. It's a classical divergence. And um, when divergence was, form, uh, was formed, it was formed here. I, so uh, on this candle, I open a long trade. I open a long trade because uh, the main trade main trend is up and if I made a mistake and uh, there is a high ch um, if I made a mistake there is a high chance that the main trend will continue and our trade will be successful even if it was a losing divergence signal so um, just once again what we are do doing uh, first you should define the global trend or the main trend. Uh, just look at daily or H4 time frame and define it. Then wait for a correction of this trend on uh, lower time frames such as M30 or H1, maybe M15 and uh, try to find the, the divergence. When divergence was formed you should open long trade uh, in the same direction as the main trend is. The main idea of this strategy is that you may get up to 80% profitable signals using this filter, but uh, it works only on trendy currency pairs such as um, Euro against American dollar, British pound against American dollar, Uh, American dollar against Japanese yen or or any cross courses with Japanese yen. Okay, uh, one more question you may ask, where to put the stop loss if you trade divergences? Divergence means, uh, means it means a loss in momentum, that's why another minimum after this one is unlikely to be formed if it's a true signal. That's why I suggest placing stop loss 5 pips below this low. So I'm betting that this the level of this uh, low won't be reached because there was a divergence which uh, signals that the market won't be so strong and uh, the trend is likely to change. Uh, so in this example you see that there was another low but it was higher than previous one. And just once again I repeat, uh, I want I just want you to remember that divergence tells us that momentum is lost on the market. What means that the strength of the current short-term market trend decreased. That's why I can assume that there won't be another minimum. 
And yes, if we look at the chart, the uptrend continued and uh, uh, if you open a long trade here, you can earn a lot. You, you could earn a lot, really. Uh, another question is where to put a take profit. Actually, divergences can't help us in this issue. Uh, the only thing I recommend, if you see an opposite signal, I mean, uh, I mean, if you see an opposite divergence signal, just close the trade. And uh, if speaking about take profits, I usually look for the nearest key level of resistance or support, and uh, I place my take profit a few pips, usually five to this to ten, five to ten pips closer to the market. Okay, so I hope everything is clear about divergences. And if you have some questions, just don't hesitate to ask them now. And uh, by the way, I'm going to run a poll. Uh, please rate if you are, uh, how satisfied are you from this webinar? when one is bad and five is excellent. So I will launch, I will launch it for, for a minute. And now I want to provide you with some bonus indicators. Just let me uh, demonstrate it to you, which one, the first one. Just look at this indicator. It's it's a universal indicator. It uh, helps uh, to to draw a divergence. It actually it draws it automatically, and there are uh, 30 indicators that uh, you can base uh, that you can base this um, this divergence. For example, if we want to use um, I don't know. For example. Uh, momentum. Just insert 11 here, click OK, close, and what we see? There is a divergence here. There is a low and there is one more low, but uh, looks like it was a false signal because uh, the market continues to uh, to decrease. Okay, let's uh, let's choose another indicator. Uh, for example, let it be um, stochastic number eighteen. Here is stochastic, and now there is no divergence, but uh, you may see that uh, it marks all the peaks. Oh, by the way, it looks like a di divergence here. Okay, mm, I also have a few more indicators for you. This indicator is uh, called CCI divergence. Just uh, in, um, insert all the parameters and click OK. And then you will see that it draws divergences for example, uh, automatically. Uh, for example, here it's a divergence. It was a divergence. Uh, first high, second high, and if you look at the chart, there is uh, this uh, maximum is lower than this one what signals us uh, about um, the trend reversal and yes, the trend uh, changed and it was a downtrend then. Uh, 
uh, I also have another indicator, just let me open another window, uh, template. It is called uh, MACD divergence. And that it works the same. And yes, there are so many divergences, but currently there is no one uh, with, which you can apply to your account. So, but just uh, look at this chart and you will see if there is a divergence. Uh, and uh, just remember my advice to to stick to the main trend, I mean to open trades in the same direction of the main trend. And uh, in this case your trades will be, uh, there will be more profitable trades on your account. Okay, let me open another chart. And there is also stochastic divergence. But uh, actually I don't like how it works. Uh, that's why I suggest you to use uh, this one. The, it is the most universal. It can write you the divergence on any oscillator. Okay, guys, please uh, vote on the poll. And ask me some questions if you have. Uh, because uh, this is all I wanted to tell you on this webinar and uh, I am waiting for your questions. If you have some, don't hesitate to ask them now. I'll wait you. F um, I'll wait for a few minutes, and uh, I will also show you something while waiting. Okay. Oh, we can also use standard. Oh, l let's try to use volume indicator. And let's see what will happen. Yes, there are two divergences here. This is one of them. But I actually I don't believe in volume in forex because it's a not a, it's not a volume it's tick volume, uh, what means that it calculates only the number of transactions but not its uh, uh, the, not the amount of tra transactions. Let's choose another one. Okay, which one to choose? Let's choose are we uh, oh standard deviation. Yeah, let it be standard standard deviation. Okay, and what close? Yes, there is a divergence. But Yeah. 
we can see a downtrend here and it also signaled us that uh, the uptrend will be reversal. Actually, um, the standard deviation indicator is not suitable for this, um, uh, for looking uh, for divergences. Let's choose another one. By the way, I download this universal indicator on uh, MetaQuotes forum. It's for, for free and uh, I will definitely send it to Damien. You can ask him. Uh, okay, let's um, let's just uh, calculate open, close, high, low prices and divide it by four. Number 27. And this is how the price looks. Yes, and it was a uh, false signal. It was uh, it was convergence here. There are two peaks, okay. uh, and two peaks on the chart. And uh, by the way, uh, this indicator when you uh, when you sum four prices and calculate uh, divided by four looks the same as the price. That's why I suggest you to use um, just common indicators such as uh, stochastic, RSI, um, and uh, MACD. Let it be RSI number 29. Yes, and you see that was a true signal here. It was uh, a peak was formed here and uh, again we see that uh, uh, the indicator also formed two peaks and this one is lower than uh, the previous one. As for the chart we see that this one is lower than the next one. So it signals us that the market is likely to decrease and yes it decreased. So that's why I want you to use only these common indicators to use uh, I mean to trade divergences. I just will repeat what they are. Uh, it's a relative strength index, uh, moving average, convergence, divergence, MACD, uh, stochastic oscillator, and commodity channel index, which is also known as CCI. Looks like there is no questions and uh, let me check, yes, no questions. So thank you for your attention guys. This uh, webinar was recorded and it will be uploaded at forexbot.com. Uh, see you on our next webinar. If you have any questions, uh, just just send them at uh, support at forexboat.com and uh, I also uh, uh, I will definitely answer you. Thank you all. I'm going to finish the webinar.